Welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, the Emmy-nominated, never-imitated Johnny Rizzo! Uh, I grew up in a, in a hard scrabble town called Bridgeport, Connecticut, and uh, as a kid, I, I had initial uh, idea that I wanted to be an entertainer of some kind, but I didn't know how I could do that since Hollywood was 3,000 miles away across the country. I was a, a class clown. I was a cut up. I, I couldn't resist uh, raising hell in class and getting other kids in trouble and making them crack up at inappropriate times. And that was very, very seductive to me. I mean, there was a power. There was a sense of power. I have some kind of power. And my English teacher, Mr. Suntag, Mike Suntag, right here from Central High School. Right here. Right there. And nobody's thinking, go to the principal's office. You smell like fun again. Honestly, all you need is like a couple of friends that think you're funny and you'll find more people that think you're funny. I mean, I can't even imagine it, him growing into Johnny Rizzo. I just think he was always that way. You know, like if he was in high school, he was 14-year-old Johnny Rizzo telling dirty jokes. And... You ever make love to an asthmatic? You never know if you're doing good. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Damn, I'm killing this bitch. Ah. <laughs> Entertainment was the only other alternative where I could make a lot of money for not really doing physical labor and working. I think that had a lot to do in my early, early uh, genesis of being a performer. When I started out in the business um, 30 years ago, I was, um, uh, I was on a, a nice roll. My career was taking off. I was getting good breaks. Uh, comedy was brand new, so we were like rock stars. When he had reached his, his biggest point, was probably in the mid to late 80s. Like he was huge. He was working on something with HBO and he was gonna explode. My career was starting to peak. I was getting television, I was getting uh, commercials, and then um, a tragedy happened. My father passed away. He died in my arms at the Veterans Hospital in uh, New Haven. And uh, his uh, dying words were, uh, make sure you take care of your mother. And after my father passed away, my mother took ill. And um, so instead of going to California, to Hollywood, single guy, why didn't you go to LA? I had to take care of my parents. I had a tremendous guilt about chasing my career while they were sick and dying, and there was literally nobody there but me for them. I lost four to five people within a two to two and a half year period, and it was rocking me. I mean, imagine losing your mother, your brother, your sister-in-law, your brother-in-law, and your best friend within that time span. In addition to his personal life, Johnny also ran into problems keeping his career afloat in a rapidly changing art form. I, I, I think that it, you, you, you get to a point where you're, you start to play it safe, like Johnny. Like he came up and I think he cleaned the mic off. Right. I think with comedy, it's like, it becomes dated pretty quickly. He was known as the rubber face man. He used to be like a chubby comedian that would make all these wacky faces. And People, like, they love him, like I said, people, he still has a following. He can still do an hour, like we, but it's from 1982. I'm Italian and I'm Irish. Yeah, I get drunk, I break my own legs. 
there's some guys that are so scripted, like the script just becomes boring after a while. I'm, a t I'm, uh, I'm British uh, born and I'm also Italian, Italian and Irish. I get drunk, I get drunk and I break my own legs. I cut out the middle man. Is that my hand? Whoa. It's a business of rejection. If you want to be a comic, you, you, you can't have thick skin. You need rhino skin. You need to be Teflon. You have to, uh, and eventually it just beats you up. I mean, and there's a, there's a breaking point for everybody. Johnny lost the biggest support system he had, his family. With a struggling career and a lack of support, a hidden illness was revealed. I am uh, I'm a sufferer of uh, manic depression. Uh, I'm certifiably insane. I got in a little bit of trouble in a public place. I had a total breakdown. Uh, I flipped out at a comedy club in a parking lot. A cop was called uh, because I was causing a verbal disturbance. I was on top of a dumpster and uh, shouting at people below me. It was, uh, it was the darkest part of my life. Uh, people uh, in the business didn't want to hire me because they heard the stories about me. With work drying up and his illness at its peak, Johnny hit rock bottom. I became confrontational, I became uh, angry, I became bitter. The bitterness was leading up for a long time due to uh, career uh, breaks not happening. So I wound up in a mental institution for a little while. Johnny was admitted to the psychiatric ward at St. Vincent's Hospital in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where he began to receive treatment for his disorder. The breakdown was a uh, wake-up call. You know, it's uh, it's like uh, the man upstairs saying, time out. Because I, I, I didn't know and I didn't realize how crazy I was until I got diagnosed. And then in retrospect, you got your friends and your family saying, we were really worried about you. I mean, you were saying some of the, some sick stuff. We thought you were going to die. We thought you were going to do harm to somebody. We were worried about you. And you don't see it when you're in it. You see it when you're away from it. After being institutionalized, Johnny realized that his perception of success was what led him to darkness. After my uh, breakdown, I, um, well, I reassessed my life. You know, I had, a, I had a look at what was killing me. And what was killing me was this insatiable drive to, quote, make it. Anyway, uh, before I went to the nut house, <laughs> I had a lot of fun going there. Get this. <laughs> they actually threw me out because I was disturbing the other patients. <laughs> not ashamed of it. A lot of people would not even talk about it, but I, I think not talking about it is the worst thing that I could do for people that also suffer with this horrible, horrible disease. Johnny returned to stand-up comedy with the new perspective that his success would no longer be determined by fame. Making it meant something else. Going into uh, comedy now, I'm getting back to the basics of enjoying it again. I, I love to do it, man. I love being up there. Got the cannon down there, they stole the freaking ball of my <laughs> I think there's a trick to staying true to like just doing what you think is funny versus what you're what you realize worked for your audience and then trying to broaden your audience and broaden your audience you end up you try to please everyone you end up pleasing no one if you don't want to be a comic quit if you don't want to be an actor quit but a lot of people will hang in there even when it's really, really bad because the, the appeal and the seduction that's involved in performing is greater than opium, heroin, or alcoholism. It, it, it's, there's nothing like the reward that you get from entertaining a crowd and doing a great job. We had extra sketch. Could make a circle come in? <laughs> I 
than 200 people, a captive audience paying attention to me, and they're hanging on my every word. Oh, I'm a freaking idiot. <laughs> what you can make with stairs? <laughs> it's the whole audience saying, we love you. And everybody needs love. Going into it now, uh, from post breakdown, it's, it's getting back to basics. You know, why did you do this in the first place? One, you didn't want to work. You didn't want a regular job. You didn't want to be a laborer. Two, you wanted attention. You wanted love. You wanted the adulation of your peers. I got it. I got it. It's there. I always wanted to be a dramatic actor and all this crazy stuff. It never turned out, but you know, I got to make people laugh. And that's always made me feel good about what I do, you know. <laughs> open road ahead of me. I have a lot of good years left, I hope, and I'm creative, so I will find a way. And the whole business is changing. The whole entertainment field is changing. And I can make my, my vision come true. Will it be financially rewarding? Who gives a fuck? Who cares? This is the new paradigm. This is the new shift. The ground is moving under your feet right now, right now. And I am now coming into that realization at this point in my life, I'm starting to realize that, no, it's not over. It's just beginning. You've been a great crowd. Thanks for coming out. Woo! ever get a break again? Yeah, I'll get a break again. Because I'm the best there is. <laughs>